Uh, I was thinking that a couple of, of years ago, the main question of, uh, of our debates about open content was, uh, is e education ready to open up? W we were asking uh, this, this kind of questions, but actually we can say that education is ready. Really, the education is ready, but thinking in our seminar and linking open content with uh, mobile learning, my question, my question today is, uh, or could be, it's really convenient to open up you're going to say, what is she talking about? But uh, I have been traveling a lot mm, around uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and Latin America, and there is some worries about open content. They have some worries about open content, so I'm going to explain you this kind of worries. Uh, because where a content once was bound by, um, by time space, it now uh, pours freely from uh, a lot, uh, a lot of uh, many kind of uh, uh, of sources. Uh, what used to be a one-way conversation, uh, professor, teacher, student, now uh, become a multi-party between uh, teachers, students, and peers. That uh, yesterday we could see that the the the, the, the peers were a main key on the on the campus life. Uh, <clears throat> we now know that open, edu uh, open education is not only a distribution channel, it's not only a distribution channel. Open education is uh, actually far bo uh, broader. It's, a, its philosophical uh, context is based on openness, openness uh, open to people, open to places, open to methods, ideas, ideas new and old, conventional or not in order to enable a learning env environment that is both student-centered and, uh, and, well, and as well academical, academically rigorous. But is that enough? Uh, just a couple of quick th thoughts. First, some, voice, uh, some voices defend and GPL, uh, uh, general public licenses mainly linked to open source software. Uh, GPL and open courses can, can hinder innovation in the developing world and can become a kind of new colonialism. Uh, these voices come mainly from the, uh, the developing world. Well, they said that, and they are, uh, that, that is their, uh, their worry, so I think that we should think about that. The paradox is that the voices, I, I have to say that as well, that voices come mainly from the industry, come from the people, but also from the industry. And I remember uh, when the, I, I, I listened to some of these comments, not by the people, because by the people we have to take into account what they say, but by the uh, industry, it remembers me the debates about uh, public TV, commercial TV. The great uh, defender of, uh, of uh, public TV is and was commercial TV because of the ads, because they want all the ads for them. So we have a lot of literature about, uh, about the new colonialism, but we have to uh, to be uh, prudent because some of this literature comes from the industry, from the industry of knowledge. The industry of knowledge that is very dangerous in places like Africa. Because Africa take, have taken the, 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 the uh, take e-learning as, uh, as a, uh, a tool, a very important tool because they, they can't build they cannot build new universities. And they, the, their option is e-learning. So you have all these multinationals of knowledge going there to do business. And they say that the open content, that uh, with the open content, they, they, they cannot do business. It's a new kind of colonialism. But I say that, but by the other, by the, um, you, you can have also some very important voices coming from professors, coming from teachers, saying, okay, open content, okay, but uh, we have to be prudent about that because, uh, uh, well, the, the, this fear that can hinder innovation, it's, uh, I think that we must take into account that. Just do some kind of reflection about that. But by the moment, we have to say that uh, the, uh, the, their uh, world uh, academics are less concerned with the terms and philosophy to op uh, of open content and open source that with not having access to technology or content at all. So, well, but 
I, I have been looking at some data from MIT about use, because one thing is access, having access, and the other thing is using. And if you see the, 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 the use, it's really poor. The big use of open content is in North America. 41% of the open content is from MIT. Africa is just 1%. And uh, North, uh, uh, Sub Saharan Africa. North Africa is 5%. Latin America is 5%. India is 8%. Euro Europe, including uh, Eastern countries, is uh, eight, uh, 19. And East Asia is 21. And another thing about use is who is using open content? Uh, students and self learners, but not professors. Uh, students, it's 42% uh, uh, self. In, uh, internationally. Uh, Self-learners is 43%. Uh, educators is 9%. And 6% others. So uh, students are using and self-learners are using uh, open source, uh, uh, open content, but uh, professors, it's not clear. So, well, mm, th this first question was about colonialism and about uh, having access and, and using. Right. And my second uh, remark uh, is about the change that we observe in the culture of uh, knowledge construction because of that. The linear sequences uh, of the traditional construction of knowledge going from the author to the reader or to the user uh, uh, <coughs> uh, now is broken. Uh, the author enters in direct contact with the user, with the reader, and frequently they interact and collaborate in that construction. Yesterday we, 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 we saw that uh, students, uh, is one of the demands of the students to interact, interaction, interaction, interaction. Even at uh, the UOC, our students are asking us to have more interaction, not at the, in the classroom, but in the construction of the, of the content, on the construction of our materials. They ask for wiki materials. So uh, this is a thing that we have to, 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 to think about. And uh, the, the, the main thing here is what are the outcomes of such, such a social revolution in science. Uh, and from the liberation, I mean, from the, the liberation uh, of science from institution, institutional, of knowledge from institution, institutional canalization. So well, it was another thing to think about. So. Uh, yes, I, I, I know that there is some questions. Uh, we are still in the uh, age of uh, copyright, copyright age. But, uh, well, uh, it, uh, things are changing. So we have to start thinking about what, uh, what happens with all, all of that. To, to, to summarize, uh, these two issues it's, uh, are important for me. A certain kind of colonialism based on the lack uh, of innovation due to, by one hand, to the use of open content made abroad, and by, uh, by other due directly to the content. Some problems, some worries about the content is because the content is made abroad, is not made uh, in house, at home. Uh, but the, the other is about the content of the, of, the, of the same content, the content of the content. Uh, and second, ICTs and more concretely open content distributed by mobile devices that arrive, you have to, to walk around Africa, you are going to see everybody with, uh, with mobile uh, devices, uh, led to the reorganization, reorganization of power relations between various social uh, institutions that participate in the transfer of knowledge from authors to users with different kind of impact. So I don't know if I've, I have been clear enough. In five minutes, it's very difficult to be clear about one thing uh, like that. that this is not my, the center of my knowledge. It's the center of my worries now, <laughs> but not of my research. But uh, well, I just uh, would like to, to put on the table some questions just to, to discuss. I would be here just one hour. I, 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 cannot, uh, I will not be able to, to be here with you all the day. But uh, if I can, I, I, I will come back uh, because I have a government council, so I have to, to go there. But I hope that the, that the, that the seminar uh, is going to be very interesting. And please think critically. Okay.
Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, President Obeya, for your inspiring remarks, very provoking. We just, from the very uh, beginning of our event, uh, started well to, to cope with uh, questions like colonialism. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and put onto the table uh, different kind of questions because all this what we uh, uh, just heard about is go going on in the atmosphere of the um, uh, increasing mobility of our society. And in the age, in the situation where there, are, uh, there is so much need for the uh, students, for the uh, professors, for everyone who is on the go in, and involved in the process of education for new and rapid uh, information and for imminent response to it, so mobile technology becomes an uh, absolutely crucial uh, thing. So uh, this seminar was um, designed and developed uh, exactly with this uh, purpose, to explore the potential of mobile technologies as a new learning media, uh, which attracts uh, representatives from many field, uh, fields. And uh, actually, the promise of this new media is such that in several uh, respectful um, media or academic reports or uh, 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 forecast studies, uh, one of them, for example, Horizon Report, uh, which uh, grows every day in its, let's say, popularity and uh, uh, importance, it says that uh, the rapid uh, uh, deployment of the mobile uh, devices as a means for education, for learning, uh, both formal, informal, in every setting on and off campus, uh, or self-learning at all, uh, will be now put into the two to three years perspective, which is, uh, frankly, quite a short time, because the uh, works of experimentation of small range uh, study fields uh, and prog uh, research, active re action research projects, they are going all, all the way already years and years. But um, still uh, to talk about a rapid deployment, let's see uh, uh, what uh, our discussions will show, how much we are prepared to that. Uh, I said that uh, this medium uh, attracts representatives from so many fields. Just to illustrate this, I will short, briefly uh, comment on the profile, let's say, of our participants who are here. So uh, they are, they uh, identify themselves in the uh, registration uh, in sur um, survey as university professors, researchers, telecom providers, language teachers, policy makers, uh, business school administrators, uh, community science, uh, uh, corporate learning representatives, uh, and uh, for the first time, we are having with us students, uh, meaning Open University of Catalonia students, who were given the opportunity, um, the students from the PhD and Master in Education and Technology, who were given the chance uh, to be with us. All this, frankly, thanks to the generous support of the Foundation Telefonica, 
whose primary, uh, primary mission is to uh, work on the social aspect of uh, application, uh, intensive use of technology uh, for the people, especially in deprived uh, sectors and deprived uh, uh, regions. So they are not only helping us financially, but they are actively engaged into the uh, conversation. We will have one of the uh, uh, keynotes with them, another is uh, with the demo, and thank you, Foundation of Telefonica. I frankly still don't see them. I think they're a little bit, is there Fundacion de Telefonica? No. Ah, the, uh, hello, and please uh, transmit our thanks uh, to your people. So, uh, we are talking also l a lot on the potential, on the promise of the, this medium deployed especially for the uh, developing world. And uh, World Bank, in his, um, let's say, publications, even used an expression like, much is said, much lip service is uh, uh, made to the potential, to the promise of this thing, of, this, uh, of mobile technologies for development. But there is always kind of a question in the intonation. Is it really uh, true? And uh, everyone really agrees, and we are also advocates of the uh, potentially fantastic uh, perspective for this medium as a, a learning uh, medium. But uh, that said, in a closer perspective, when you start uh, studying this field, uh, we encounter a very uneven, I would say, patchy, uh, like composed of uh, different kind of size and color patches, uh, so much that it's easy to get confused because evidence from the field, from the practice, is sometimes contradictory to the one which is provided by literature and by the practice. So that's what we are going to do in this seminar. We are trying to uh, get the picture from the f first hand, from the expert uh, in these uh, uh, different fields and try to make uh, sense of this picture. I will just kind of list mention several big gaps uh, in the area of the use of mobile technologies and education. One of them between research and practice, between promise and evidence. We know little or nothing about real, the real impact. And we know that more and more resources of money, of time, of the, uh, let's say, attention, uh, are uh, poured into this field. And nevertheless, uh, how, uh, uh, we, how do we know that what we are doing is the right thing in pedagogical, economic, social, psychological, and ethical terms? In this sense, it's kind of a little bit of uh, communication between our questions, which uh, uh, Ima Tobeya and me are <coughs> placing here. Another gap is between opportunities and challenges for developed and developing world. Well, excuse me, this kind of old uh, terminology, but for the sake of the, uh, of the time, I would say I will still keep it. While the first world is experimenting with this, sm small screens, big screens, uh, with the high-end technological environments, uh, the third world needs still to develop and adapt cheap technologies, that is, low-cost mobile phones with the SMS uh, very often as the uh, only way 
to send and receive the information. There is a big gap between research and development and high uh, impact solutions at scale. We know very well that there is, as I mentioned before, the, a lot of beautiful, innovative, very promising uh, projects uh, are going on. Some of them already in many um, iteration and uh, perfecting performance and coming better and better and coming closer to the end of the, to the goal of the uh, project which was uh, done. Uh, but still, uh, if we are talking about massive, large-scale projects, they are only, I would say, I would mention just two of them. Uh, one uh, laptop per child uh, started in 2007 in, uh, based in the uh, Cambridge Matches, uh, Matches, uh, Oops, okay, you know. <laughs> Massachusetts uh, is um, a project which had an ambition uh, goal to provide to uh, uh, a personal uh, laptop, personal medium, personal uh, platform for every of the, I believe, 2.5 billion children in developing countries. Uh, uh, you know all well that the project basically failed uh, for different reasons, for conflict between uh, providers, no uh, real business plan, um, not prepared uh, content uh, which could be put onto this platform for many, for cost which uh, uh, eventually happened to be t twice plus uh, as high as it was planned. So there is a whole set of reasons why it did not work. But this is exactly one of those projects when the failed project, uh, we have learned from it so much. And it's very important that exactly out of this grew new initiatives, new um, challenges to create better uh, to create content, to create new type of the laptop, and that literally everywhere uh, they are working on their uh, own uh, devices of that kind. So we learned a lot from OLPC uh, project. Another one which I would mention, also a kind of large scale, high profile uh, project is the one which UK is uh, now doing uh, in Bangladesh, where uh, mobile uh, uh, technology is used for delivering about 250 plus uh, courses, uh, quizzes, uh, tasks to the, to the population, which is potentially like, I believe, 50 million uh, of uh, people in Bangladesh, the country where it's uh, absolute majority of population, many, let's say, significant part of the population lives on $2 per day. So the challenge is really uh, big. But we are, for the first time, I at least have seen that there is, was a very serious uh, uh, thought about how it will work. Uh, certainly, it's a long way to go to reach out to all this population uh, which they are counting on. But uh, so far, they claim they had about 180,000 communications, which means not only calls to the program and participation, but downloading, uh, interacting with the responding with the quizzes and so on, all this uh, why it's possible, of course, of the donors' money. The uh, project is founded by the UK Department for International Development. And uh, what is very important, uh, a special telecom provision policy, because all six 
uh, telecom uh, uh, providers uh, in Bangladesh agreed to deliver, uh, to transfer, uh, to transmit those calls within this program for the cost cut down up to 75% uh, of the real cost. So for the cost of, let's say, equivalent to one cup of tea, the people can really do what they do. And since English language in the, uh, those countries is a key to the labor market, to the success, to the global world, to the communication with the, with the people. So that's not, uh, not, um, uh, not by chance that the uh, project has a name, who, which translation means window. So this is so far a uh, very good and uh, successful development. So I just, what uh, would I say? Ah, uh, software makers also kind of responded uh, very well to the challenges which were uh, quite obviously perceived from the uh, OLPC uh, project. For example, it was clear that the cost was still prohibiting, uh, prohibitive, uh, both cost for connection and for hardware, still prohibitive. <coughs> so the, uh, Microsoft developed a program uh, which is called multi-mouse uh, software, and it was immediately picked up. And uh, today, I will when you know already from the leaflet uh, which was distributed in the file that unfortunately Miguel Nussbaum uh, got uh, seriously ill, could not be with us uh, uh, physically, but he will, I believe, talk about this in his presentation uh, in the uh, first hour after the lunch. And this is a terrific opportunity and if taken seriously, carefully programmed, I have talked myself in Santiago to the team of uh, Miguel Nussbaum, and they are there are fantastic things which are doing, which they are doing in the schools of Chile with this uh, uh, multiple uh, mouse uh, project. But of course, uh, another challenges or. Yeah, uh, the, just the last of the gaps which I kind of noted uh, for, my, uh, for myself is, was uh, between the gap between the levels of adoption in, re in various uh, countries, including countries, let's say, with the, limit with the limited uh, resources. For example, uh, Brazil, which we could have expected to jump into the field, they are very, cautious and very slow in, adapted, in uh, adapting this new technology. I uh, wouldn't uh, uh, be able to say why. One of the guesses is that what is a really serious uh, um, hindrance or obstacle for the prudent government to invest heavily in the um, use of the ICTs, and in particular mobile technologies in the education, is the lack of the serious assessment uh, methodology of the real impact of pedagogical use, for pedagogical use of uh, information technologies. Maybe that's why, for example, uh, Brazil is still very slow in this, and it's only now that one can see that they are kind of preparing to make the real uh, salto, uh, uh, the real um, entering into this. So I think that's um, uh, all what I would uh, say. The very good thing is that in the countries with the limited resources, for example, let's say, let's see Africa. African continent really just has stunned the world with the fantastic spread of this 
technology. It's really a kind of leapfrogging process in developing of the telecommunications and mobile networks. And uh, even if it's costly, doesn't work everywhere, there is a question of sustainability, of poor hardware technology and so on. But it makes the people, the limit, the limitation of resources make the people very, very creative. And the, the pedagogues, the academics, they uh, immediately jump onto, onto it, and they are not waiting for money uh, to come and to be able to give everyone a nice device. They are working with the devices which are uh, already available. And uh, even if they are just SMS uh, as a basic means, but the researchers, let's say, uh, uh, Center of Education Technology and the um, uh, University of Cape Town, I'm kind of admiring their uh, mobile technology project funded by, uh, uh, by um, I, I believe, Andrea uh, uh, Mellon Foundation where they try kind of to capitalize on to really explore and extend to 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 exploit the po not so rich possibility of the mobile devices in that environment for monitoring uh, making it active uh, performance support services and of course delivering of the information for the students within their uh, campus. So uh, there are just a few things uh, I could say and I gladly um, give the floor uh, to our first presenter. And thank you so much and welcome. I, just to mention, uh, when I was talking about uh, participants, they are oops, 14 countries today in this room. So welcome, everyone, and thank you for coming.